wanted to ask you about this comment that you made, that the Republican Party, you said, is the most dangerous organization in world history. Can you explain? I, I also said that it's an extremely outrageous statement. But the question is whether it's true. I mean, has there ever been an organization in human history that is dedicated with such a commitment to the destruction of organized human life on Earth? Not that I'm aware of. Is the Republican organization, I hesitate to call it a party, committed to that? Overwhelmingly. There isn't even any question about it. Uh, take a look at the last uh, primary campaign. Uh, plenty of publicity. A very little comment on the most significant fact. Every single candidate either denied that what is happening is happening, namely serious move towards environmental catastrophe, or there were a couple of moderates, so-called uh, Jeb Bush, who said, maybe it's happening, we really don't know, but it doesn't matter because fracking is working fine so we can get more fossil fuels. Uh, then there was uh, the guy who was called the adult in the room, John Kasich, the one person who said, yes, it's true, global warming's going on, but it doesn't matter. He's the governor of Ohio. In Ohio, we're going to go on using coal for energy, and we're not going to apologize for it. So that's a 100% commitment to racing towards disaster. Uh, then take a look at what's happened since. The uh, uh, November 8th uh, was the election. Uh, there was, as most of you know, I'm sure, a very important conference underway in Morocco, Marrakesh, Morocco, uh, almost roughly 200 countries at the uh, United Nations sponsored con uh, conference, which was the goal of which was to put some uh, specific uh, commitments into the uh, verbal agreements that were reached at Paris in December 2015, the preceding international conference on uh, global warming. Uh, the Paris conference did intend to uh, reach a verifiable treaty, but they couldn't uh, because of the most dangerous organization in human history. Uh, the Republican Congress would not accept any commitments. So therefore the world was left with uh, verbal promises, but no commitments. Well, last November 8th, they were going to try to carry that forward. Uh, on November 8th, in fact, uh, there was a report by the World Meteorological Organization, a uh, very dire analysis of the state of the environment and the light likely prospects also pointed out that we're coming perilously close to the uh, tipping point where which was the goal, of the, the goal of the Paris negotiations was to keep things below that, We're coming very close to it, and other uh, ominous uh, predictions. At that point, the uh, conference pretty much stopped because the news came in about the election. And it turns out that the most powerful country in human history, the richest, most powerful, most influential, uh, the leader of the free world, uh, has just decided not only not to support the efforts, but actively to undermine them. So there's the whole world on one side, literally, at least trying to do something or other. Uh, not enough, maybe, although some places are going pretty far, like Denmark, a couple of others. And on the other side, in splendid isolation, is the country led by the most dangerous organization in human history, which is saying, we're not part of this. In fact, we're going to try to undermine it. And we're going to maximize the use of fossil fuels, could carry us past a tipping point. Uh, we're not going to provide funding for, as committed in Paris, to uh, developing countries that are uh, trying to do something about the climate problems. Uh, uh, we're going to dismantle regulations uh, that retard the uh, impact, the, devastating impact of uh, production of carbon dioxide and, in fact, other dangerous uh, uh, gases, methane, others. 
Okay, so the conference kind of pretty much came to a halt. Uh, the question, it continued, but the question was, can we salvage something from this wreckage? And pretty amazingly, the countries of the world were looking for salvation uh, to a different country, China. Here we have a world looking for salvation to China of all places, when the United States is the wrecking machine that's threatening destruction. In the, with all three uh, uh, branches of government in the hands of the most dangerous organization in human history. And I don't have to go through what's happened since, but uh, the, uh, uh, in general, the cabinet appointments are designed to uh, assign to people whose commitment and uh, uh, beliefs are that it's necessary to destroy everything in their department that could be of any use to human beings and wouldn't just increase profits and power. And they're doing it very systematically, one after another. Uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, has been very sharply cut. Uh, act actually, the main department that's concerned with uh, uh, environmental issues is the Department of Energy, which also had very sharp cuts, particularly in the environment-related programs. In fact, there's even a ban on uh, posting and publishing information and material about this. And this is not just at the national level. Uh, the Republican Party, whatever you want to call it, has been doing this at every level. So uh, in North Carolina, a couple of years ago, where the legislature, mostly thanks to gerrymandering, is uh, in the hands of the Republicans, uh, there was a, a, a study uh, uh, they called for a study on the uh, effect of sea level rise, on what sea level rise might be on the North Carolina coast. And there was a serious scientific study uh, which uh, predicted, uh, not, I forget how many years, not a long time, about uh, roughly a meter rise in sea level, uh, which could be devastating to eastern North Carolina. And the legislature did react, namely by passing legislation to ban any actions or even discussion that might have to do with climate change. Uh, actually, the best comment of this, I uh, wish I could quote it verbatim, was by Stephen Colbert, who said, uh, if you have a serious problem, the way to deal with it is to legislate that it doesn't exist, problem solved. You know? uh, this, this is going on all over the country. And it's not just, uh, it's not simply uh, Climate change, that's bad enough, but there's a, another huge specter that we're kind of uh, trying to survive under, and that's nuclear war, and that's a whole other story. Here, both the Obama administration and increasingly Trump are uh, radically increasing that danger. Uh, this, the threat of the, uh, of, of the new developments is captured uh, very effectively in the best simple monitor of the state of the world established at the beginning of the nuclear age by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. I'm sure you all know about this, but the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists regularly brings together a, a group of uh, scientists, uh, political analysts, others, very serious people to try to give some kind of estimate of what the situation of the world is. The question is, how close are we to termination of the species? And they have a clock, the doomsday clock. And when it hits midnight, we're finished. Uh, end of the human species and much else. And the question every year is, how far is the minute hand from midnight? Well, in, at the beginning, in 1947, beginning of the nuclear age, it was placed at seven minutes to midnight. Uh, it's been moving up and back ever since. The closest it's come to midnight was 1953. Uh, 1953, uh, the United States and Russia uh, both exploded hydrogen bombs, which are extremely serious threat to survival. Uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles were all be being developed. Uh, uh, this, in fact, was the first serious threat to the security of the United States. There's an interesting story behind that, but I'll put
put it aside unless there's time to talk about it. But then it came to two minutes to midnight. And it's been moving up and back since. Uh, two years ago, 2014, I think it was, the uh, uh, analysts uh, took into account for the first time something that had been ignored. Uh, the fact that the nuclear age, uh, the beginning of the nuclear age, coincided with the beginning of a new geological epoch, uh, the so-called Anthropocene. There's been some debate about the epoch in which human activity is uh, drastically affecting the general environment. Uh, there's been debate about its inception, but the World Geological Organization has recently determined that it's about the same time as the beginning of the nuclear age. So we're in these two eras in which the uh, possibility of human survival is very much at stake. And with us, everything else too, of course, living, all living, most living things, which are already under very severe threat. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was 2014, the bulletin began to take that into account and moved the minute hand up to three minutes to midnight, uh, where it remained last year. A couple of, about a week into Trump's term, uh, the clock was moved again to two and a half minutes to midnight. That's the closest it's been since 1953. Uh, and that means uh, extermination of the species is very much in, uh, very much an open question. Uh, I don't want to say it's solely the impact of uh, the Republican Party. Obviously, that's false. But they certainly are in the lead uh, in uh, openly uh, advocating and working for uh, destruction of the human species. I agree that's a very outrageous statement. Uh, so I therefore simply suggest that you take a look at the facts and uh, see if uh, it has any merit or if it just uh, should be bitterly condemned. That's up to you. In my view, the facts are pretty clear. <laughs>